white is a very difficult color to paint even some commission painters will even charge more just because if they have to paint a lot of white on a model but why is it hard what's difficult about white and how can we fix it to make the model look white very easily very quickly So let's say we want to paint the hairs of this guy in a white. The best option to do it, and as you can see the model is primed black even, wouldn't, the best option wouldn't be to prime it black if you want to be faster or if you have a lot of white to paint, but my personal choice is to always prime, prime black my models. I don't really know why, I just love painting over black. So we're painting white and I can show you a prime example of something that has been painted fully white and doesn't look very nice when you, when you look at it. So like, if you look at this nice model here, you can see that the armor is darker than the rim. The reason is because I was asked to paint the rim in a, in a white color by the commissioner, or because they wanted it for uh, playing reasons. But when I painted the model, I wasn't thinking about the rim and I was just painting, trying to paint a good white. And as you can notice, the rim is brighter than the actual model, even though it's a Tau and it's supposed to be wearing a white armor. So rule number one for painting white is that you don't want to use pure white when you're doing it, except maybe for edge lights or some very, very final highlighting. Pure white needs to be very, very scarcely used, otherwise it does play around a bit too much with the values and the contrast and the model looks super odd. So rule number one, paint your models not in pure white. Always use darker shades of gray or ivory or creamy colors or whatever you want, but don't use pure white, especially as a base coat. You want to, you want to highlight into white, but you want to have the base coat of something that looks white, not white. If you pick a piece of paper and you fold it, you will notice that the pure white look of the piece of paper gets progressively darker uh, the more you fold it, pretty much. To a point where you almost don't even see the pure white, it just becomes like a gray thing, right? That's the reasoning behind painting white as well. Even if an object is white, it will have reflections on the top of it that make it look r bright and white, but the shades of it will, and the base coat of it will actually look a dark gray even sometimes. So this is step number one. You don't want your white to be pure white, except in the edge lights and uh, in, the, in the strongest highlights of it. How do we use this white though? Like we, we do want some white in the model, right? And uh, that white needs to come from somewhere. And if you have painted long enough, especially using GW paints, you will have understood that their whites aren't very good and you're gonna be like, oh, white sky is such a bad color. And you're right. And most whites from GW are very bad colors. Everything that is even remotely tinted with white from GW will not be a good color, generally speaking. That's the, the strongest weakness. They will tell you to use Lamia medium and stuff to be able to use them well. But my answer to that is just buy an heavy body or buy a uh, an ink. So this is everybody. Uh, there are many brands who make them. I'm using currently Liquitex, but Winsor & Newton makes it, Schmickel makes it, lots of brands make it. Everybody's are artist grade paints. They are not for miniature painters per se. When these were invented, they weren't for miniature painters. These are for canvas or other purposes. But we use them in miniature painting, not only the whites, also other colors to for their, their look and their effect. Every white, everybody are very nice, especially the white. Because as you can see, if I can manage to get this open, looks like toothpaste really. It's not really a paint, see, it like, comes out. It's not watery like our normal paints are. And if you, if you check it, it's super thick, super, super thick. And we like this actually, because this means that when we go to dilute this color, we're gonna have a nice coverage of the white without getting any weird chalkiness or lack of coverage like we do in our normal miniature paints. To be fair though, there is a white from miniature painting companies that is really good. And that white is the Monument Titanium White. So if you don't wanna get into artist grade stuff and you still wanna use miniature painting co colors, Monument White is super great. It's not as good as a heavy body or an ink, but it is very close to being that. So 
This is a really good color. I use it very often actually because I'm lazy. I cannot really be asked working on with inks and heavy bodies. So I will always, not always, but usually rely upon this color instead. That said though, heavy bodies and inks have different uses. An ink like this one from Schmickel, Schmincke, is a very good ink that you can use to highlight your colors on the palette or you can use it to very gently tint a color to make it brighter while it's on top of the model already. I'll try to show you a few examples of how to use this color. So let's get started on painting the, the Dryad guy. Let's go. I have these guy primed in black. All I have to do now is get some black, get it on a palette, and uh, then mix it in with some ink to make a gray. I don't usually use pure gray colors. I just, uh, I also shake my inks as well. It's a, it's a, they tell you to shake them, so you should do them. Even if it doesn't feel like you should, you should. But yes, I, I don't use a gray, a pre-mixed one. I always mix my own. I don't really know why, I just like doing it. And also I never really found a good gray that covers well over black without too much effort. I just find myself liking this mix more. So we have a gray, and as you can see, like the, the ink mixed super well with the color, and now it gives me such a smooth paint too, because the best thing about inks is that they are very watery, they're like, you can call them washes, even though they are definitely not washes, but that's how they feel like. So when you mix them with a normal acrylic color, they make that color very, very diluted, which means that you can literally use inks to dilute your paints. Like, you can have a base coat color with a bit of ink in it, and as you can see, it flows so easily off of the brush, and it covers so well too. And at the same time, if you want to progressively highlight, you can just add more ink to it, and it will dilute the color, making a layer, or even a glaze sometimes, without having to actually add water, which is really good, because it allows you to not lose pigmentation, because you're not really adding water to separate the pigments, you're just adding more of another color so you're making it brighter but the, the amount of pigments is still going to be pretty stable in your paint which means that you get some very very nice layers using inks so white is the one we're talking about today but there are many other inks that are really good and i, I mean i don't think they are necessary in a, in in an arsenal of a painter i mean except the white and black black and white are really good all the others you can live without, but they allow you to have some very nice vibrancy in your colors, which sometimes you want. So we have this color down, and again, let me show you how the ink actually behaves on, like you can see, it's, it's very, very watery. This particular ink here is a bit thicker than most inks, but in general, that's how inks are. They are, they are very watery. So if I add more of this ink, I get a brighter gray. And now what I'm going to do is highlight, avoiding the shadows. So as you can see, I'm not using pure white at all. I'm starting from a dark gray, and now I'm adding a bit more white to it, but I'm still super, super far from pure white, which is rule number one, and also like the only important rule, really. You don't want to get to pure white. Not in the first few steps, at least. I'm going to be using pure white on these, but at the end of the paint job. Also, please don't judge the quality of the painting. I'm doing it very, very quickly just to show you guys how it looks like on a general idea. I don't, I'm not really looking for impressive quality. And inks are good because they can be, they can be feathered very very easily that makes them fantastic you can feather an ink super easily and you get some very nice blending with just a little lick of the brush okay we have this down mm -mm. Now more ink, this time we can go a lot brighter if we want. 
we are almost pure white as you can see but not not quite not quite pure white and we can do one more highlight on these eyes to make them look even whiter but they already look white as you can see like i don't need pure white to make them look white they just uh, it's so difficult to explain because it's a matter of the local contrast between colors like the what what gives the idea of the origin of a color on an object is related to many many different things and it's difficult to explain but let's just say that you don't need pure white as as i said many times already you don't really need pure white you just want bright colors close to white but not pure white and again, going forward, just making it slightly brighter, not covering the previous layer, just leaving it there to you know, create the illusion of shading and, uh, and progressive highlighting. The bad thing about inks, this one specif specifically, is that it's very glossy. Well, not really glossy, but it's super, super satin. So on has, it works really well. On other things, it doesn't. So you wanna maybe varnish it at the end, or use a heavy body because heavy bodies are satin as well, but way less than this particular ink is. Or you can buy matte inks, although this one is a matte ink, and it's not really matte. But it might also be due to the fact that I haven't shook it very much. I was trying to be quick. So yes, we have we have this white here. As you can see, it's starting to look nice. Trying to get leaving some of the first gray we base coated on top. And as you can see, also like I'm covering over black super easily. The paint is not getting chalky at all. I'm getting one coat base coats. I'm not really struggling to get the paint to cover. I'm just you know slapping it down, and it covers. That's because inks are super powerful tools and they, they cover really well when you add them to another color. If you use them separately, like on their own, they don't cover very well because they are very similar to washes, although they are not really washes. And uh, But if you add them to a color, that color gives some thickness to the paint, making it cover very, very easily. And I will use inks sometimes when I want to do like a very quick base coat on a big surface. I will use an ink. Even though I might have a color that matches exactly what I want, I will mix that color using inks and uh, normal paints in order to achieve faster base coating. And this is a secret really that most professional painters do. Some of them, m many, many, many painters will use inks into their coat, into their paints too change the properties a little bit so we have this down very nice now we can go with pure white and now i'm using pure white like see how far i've painted until i got to actually pure white now with this pure white we can do the strongest highlights on the little heads of this guy we don't really want to cover them all we just want the highlights to be super strong in a few spots Again, trying to preserve the highlights we have done previously, especially in the in the recesses of the hairs. I'm not gonna go into how to paint hairs. I'm not really trying very hard. I just I just picked up this model to show you guys. A quick and nice way to see it to see this at work if you do want to see a video on how to paint as way better than this <laughs> you can just ask in the comments and i'll do my best to make it in a in a near future all right so i think i like this i mean it needs a lot of cleanup like i need to you know i have gone over a lot of the folds in these as 
which I shouldn't have, which means like I can go back with with the base gray I add and very very gently try to pick out these things too or simply I should have put a bit more focus into not making mistakes and I could have avoided this as well but you can see that these white covered over black in a second in a second and again even if I just you know if I start from black without going through the gray and if I try to base coat this on I don't know let's try let's try the the the, the the bow like you can see I'm using it this is not pure white it's like a very very bright gray but see how nice it covers in one coat just one coat pure white almost pure white one coat and when this dries it's gonna dry nicely like I might need another coat in a few spots but generally speaking this is gonna cover super well and I haven't gone insane I haven't had to spend 75 hours just getting this to coat. I did not have any kind of chalkiness or weird effects to the painting. I just covered the black and it looks nice. And again, when it dries, I'm probably gonna have to do another coat, but that's not really a problem, is it? Like two coats is still better than 7,500, like you usually end up doing when you use other paints. So this is my favorite way of doing white. But if you don't like inks for any reason, you can also use heavy bodies and they have the same exact effect. Heavy bodies are slightly less glossy and uh, they are much thicker, so that means that they need a lot of dilution. They are harder to use than inks. I would suggest inks to those who are new to painting or are, you know, are not experienced with it because heavy bodies are super thick, so you end up diluting them a lot and then it gets kind of difficult to control the dilution when you mix them to other colors. I would go with inks and just straight up inks when you need to highlight something. Heavy bodies are better for a straight up pure white base coat but you don't really do it do you because as we as we mentioned you don't want to do pure white you want to do shades of gray progressively brighter into a color that looks white because of how you highlighted it but again as you can see like the pure white it's only here here in a few spots but i haven't really used pure white much on this thing but it has still look white that's because it's all about the contrast you know so that, that's the thing. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. If you have questions about what I said, please let me know. I, I think I said everything I wanted to say, honestly. And if you want to watch the stream I do every day almost, except Thursday, every day from uh, G 11 GMT plus 1 to 7 GMT plus 1. And I'm also doing evening streams now. So if you want to check out the stream and have fun, spend time with us, join giveaways such as this guy, because I do giveaways every month. We do a giveaway this is this month giveaway i'm gonna give this guy away the 29th of october so if you want to check out how to win this model and many others please come check the twitch channel at twitch.tv slash mutes then there will be a link in the description for you to follow if you want and again thank you so much i hope this guy help you out white is secretly easy to paint all you need to do is have the better the best tools and uh, it's difficult to know what these, tool are, these tools are when you are new to painting and you just find yourself using white scar, which is the devil, or like other colors similar to that. But if with just an ink, which is something you never really see mentioned in, you know, amateur hobbyist forums or videos or whatever, with an ink, you can get that result so much faster, so much better, so much cleaner. So yes, I hope you guys found the guide useful and I wish you a fantastic night. I'll see you later. Bye bye.